So we're going to go ahead and get started. But first, uh, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, Lord, we just come today. We thank you for this season of Thanksgiving. We thank you for the season of Christmas and celebration and family uh, and friends. We thank you, Lord, that you have watched over us and have kept us and have healed our bodies and provided and supplied all of our needs. And we thank you, Lord, that we were able to gather together once again after our break last week. And we just pray uh, that you bless us on tonight, that you continue to bless us and our families and our children and grandchildren. And we have great grandkids. We ask you bless them too. And we ask that you bless our marriages and our neighborhoods and communities, our world. We pray uh, that you would uh, be with Demetric, Lord, and, and all those who uh, are uh, remembering their loved ones during this holiday season, comfort their hearts and minds and spirits, lift them, give them the joy uh, that is full of your glory and the peace that passes all understanding. And we give your name the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is so good to see all of your wonderful faces. I missed you all last week, uh, even though I ate really, really good. But I am so happy to see you all back in the building. Uh, and of course, I just want to remind everyone who's on YouTube, who's on Facebook, who's on uh, Zoom to go to hotsministries.com and sign up for our newsletter, which comes out by uh, weekly. Uh, also, please, if you are on Facebook, be sure to like and to share this on your Facebook page. It literally only takes you two clicks. Hit the right arrow share button and then share it on your timeline. Two clicks, you'll be done in two seconds. Of course, you can follow us on all of our social media pages. If you just type in at the at symbol Rev uh, Isaac Hayes, and I am deputizing you all to be Cafe Mana evangelists and to invite others to come uh, and be a part of our uh, Thursday get togethers. And I got a couple of things I wanted to uh, just share with you here uh, before we dive into our heated conversations. And if I can find you all, uh, there you go. Um, and so one, of course, uh, we still have our book out there. Sorry about that. Uh, Men After God's Heart, 10 Principles of Brotherly Love. And so uh, that is available wherever books are sold and you can scan that QR code if you're watching this uh, on demand uh, and it'll take you right to amazon.com bookstore to buy the book. Uh, and so God has been blessing uh, and uh, we're doing a couple of ad buys in Christianity Today magazine, which I think that will be the January, February uh issue and then charisma magazine our book will be uh in there for the march april uh magazine so if you all subscribe to their digital or their uh print magazines then you all will see uh men after god's heart in uh those and then second um do y'all see this 1390 thing or no no no, you don't. Okay, I got to stop sharing and reshare. And I thought they might have fixed it on Facebook. Okay. On, uh, okay, so then I also want to inform you that I will be on uh, Inspiration 1390 this Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. I already pre recorded this with um, them on uh, a few weeks ago. And it will also, if you have um, iHeart app you can listen at uh inspiration 1390 on there or you can just do the am 1390 radio station but i will be uh, on there with uh sharon pulliam and uh evangelist uh, ulyssa thomas talking about the book men after god's heart and so it's our program they told me i'm the first half hour so if you turn it on at four o'clock uh then you should uh, catch my interview with them about uh, the book. And then finally, um, 
I want to remind those of you who um, got the newsletter already this week that I will be speaking this Sunday at 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, at um, Bethel Apostolic Church, which is on the west side. Oh, my goodness. Uh, with Bishop uh, Burt. <laughs> A term bowl. Uh, that service starts at five o'clock and it is for, I believe, their music ministry. They're celebrating, and the theme is No Greater Love. And also, uh, some of you all are blocking me here, but the guest host would be Pastor Lucius and Evangelist Tasha Washington. And I know they got some uh, other things Daniel Hardy in the assembly, Rehoboth New Life Center praise team. Uh, and Samus Adrian uh, McCullough. And so me uh, and Dr. Hayes are looking forward to worshiping with them uh, on uh, this Sunday. And so um, I'm not sure they don't have a website, so it would not be live stream. So I apologize for that. Um, but I, I check with them and they inform me that they do not live stream. Uh, so uh, if you want to be a part of there to support, you will have to have your uh, face in the place. So those are all of the announcements uh, that I have for you. And so now I want to go to our conversation today um, because, all uh, right, here comes Audrey, because there are some things going on in our country uh, but one of them is that we were close to having a railroad workers strike, a railroad workers strike, and it threatened to just mess up everybody's Christmas, the way that they were talking. But it appears that the uh, powers that be in Washington, D.C. have helped to avert this crisis. But my question to you is, should the railroad workers be allowed to strike? Should the railroad workers, that is a tongue twister for me, be allowed to strike? Is it fair to them that the government said, no, y'all can't strike? Particularly when you have a Democratic president, a Democratic House, and uh, a Democratic uh, Senate, which typically is on the side of labor. Uh, what, do, what do you all think? Do you think they should have been allowed to strike or, or, or no? Go ahead, Jerry. I say, I, oh. Go ahead. Well, go ahead, Dimitri. I say yes, but not, not around this time right now because it's around the holidays and it really was gonna mess up a lot of things. But I heard one man was saying that the reason why they were striking because they don't want to give them sick leave and they don't want to give them uh, an increase in pay. So I feel they should have a right to strike because they working, they have, and it's not like the railroad people don't have the money. They just don't want to give it to the workers. And I feel that's not fair. Okay, so you say that they should be allowed to strike January one, <laughs> but 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 not uh, during the holiday uh, season. All right, Gerald. Well, I felt that in this circumstance, since that would lock down and destroy all of our economy, uh, that it was right for the president to step in to see what he could do to bring those two parties together. I can imagine that they did not have six, we talking about six paid uh, days of sick leave. Uh, I heard them interviewing some and they were talking about during COVID, you know, some, uh, your child gets sick or spouse, and you had to take off with no pay. It's ridiculous because you didn't have six measly days of, of sick uh, leave. And uh, so in this circumstance, because it would lock down, it would lock down the whole nation. It, you know, food, not just food, not toys, but all, all essentials. Uh, they can't put them all on an airplane to go anywhere. They, most of them 
go by rail. So I, I applaud him for the initiative that he took uh, in this circumstance. Okay, so that's another, yes. To try to get them what they need. Right. Well, I certainly agree that I think it was good. And I know Ronald Reagan had an issue during his time when he was president with the airline people. I don't know if it's the, the pilots or whoever it was. My thing might have been the pilots. Pilot. And he kind of just said, y'all going back to work. Uh, the Congress kind of did at this time. The president obviously was in favor of it. And it was bipartisan. Uh, you know, So it was Republicans and Democrats. And, and so... Um, but but you are a yes on that. All right, uh, Gail, I see your hand. Mm -hmm. I think all government subsidized entities are at the mercy of the government and therefore should not be able to strike because they are servicing our nation in goods and services. So my right. answer to your question is no. I don't All think right. they have the right to strike. So if you take the money, uh, then you got to uh, do yes. what the, the hands say. Absolutely. So, there, so there's don't no Don't take the money, if you, money. Don't want, if you don't want to follow the government's edicts. Yeah, okay. You know? All right. Let's go back and say something. Yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, see. I'm a retired ass assistant principal, <laughs> high school assistant principal. Have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and we get money from the government. No, but you are not servicing the entire nation in, your pro in, in the product out of your schools. They're individually funded to service a district and a given area. Railroads and airline services out of the entire citizens of the United States. All right. Well, That's administrators couldn't strike anyway. Yeah, because so, they're in a union, right? No, administrators are not union. They're we're, not. We're under the CPS, admin, you know. Mm -hmm. No, okay. we're under under them. <laughs> yeah, y'all part of the payroll payroll crew, the taskmasters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, whatever that means, right? Yeah, Pharaoh, you had the taskmasters, and then you had the children of Israel. Oh, mm -hmm. oh I got you. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> However, yeah, we were the taskmasters because the assistant principals did all the work, and the principal didn't do squat. <laughs> okay, That's so we got some yeses, and then we got a no. Any other thoughts? Should they been able to cancel Christmas? I tell you. Their benefits are you. Audrey's hand is up. <laughs> Go ahead, Audrey. You got to unmute. Still muted. You got to unmute. Has Snowy been put back in? Gail, stop walking away, leaking without <laughs> So while Audrey trying to unmute, we gonna, anybody else had something to say? I do. Okay, go ahead, Martha. Okay, I say that uh, they, they do not have a right to strike. Now I'm, I'm for union, don't get me wrong, because when I was working, I was a union member, regardless how no good they were. I still was a union member. I believe in union. But these are the jobs that they, they signed up for this. And when they signed up to get the job, they knew the rules and regulations at, when they signed up. And uh, that's what you signed up for. You're making all this money, and that's what you signed up for. So I said, no, they did not have a right to strike. OK. So you saying before you took the job, you knew you didn't have no sick days. You knew that 
you had to always be on call because whenever the shipment arrived, that's when they had to do it. So there was no set schedule. Now I need to know why in 2022, we can't come up with a system with a set schedule. So I, I, I agree with them that, that something in that should have been worked out. Are those right. strikeable offenses? I don't know. Uh, I just personally don't like the idea that anybody can hold my business hostage. That's just me. That, that you can hold my business hostage and, 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 and run my business. You know, I, I do have challenges with that whole concept that somebody going to tell me how to run my business. Uh, and so I kind of agree with you to the degree that once we enter to a contractual agreement, both parties know what the expectations are. And if you don't agree with that, then you negotiate that at the time that the uh, hiring is done. Uh, or you say thanks, but no thanks. Um, so um, it, it, you know, there's no right or wrong answer uh, to this. Uh, in my opinion, I just wanted to get people's thoughts uh, because I think it is wishy-washy that oh, not around Christmas. If if this was March, would they be able to go on strike? You know, if this was June, would they be able to go on strike? But just because it's Christmas, they can't. I, I think we have to be consistent with this. If if they are allowed to strike under law, then they should be able to use the leverage of the Christmas season to get what they want. If this is what collective bargaining is about, leveraging, that's what the teachers do. Since we use that example, uh, the parents get tired of paying for uh, babysitters. They get tired. Grandma get tired of, of watching the kids. <laughs> and, and so forth and so on, uh, then you, you use that leverage to be able to get better contracts for the teachers. So, um, you know, people use what they can to get what they want. That's the American way. That's the capitalist way, even when we talking about unions. Uh, any other thoughts? Yes, no, they should have been allowed to strike. They should not have been allowed to strike. But the other, the other side of that too, um, Isaac is, don't misuse and abuse uh, us because we can't. I mean, for them not to have any sick leave and, uh, and low wages because I can't protest or strike, there's a problem there. So. Yeah, there's always a delicate balance, right? We, we don't want to go back to the days, sweatshops, uh, to the days of the workplace abuse and, and mistreatment as, as Christians, because this is a Christian platform, that we do believe in the human dignity of every individual because we are all made in the image of God. We are image bearers. And you all on here are familiar with that term for me. We are made in the image of God. We are image bearers. So we treat everyone with dignity and respect. And the Bible talks about worker rights, not, not unions, but, but about worker rights and, and making sure you pay people, that you don't mistreat them, that you don't misuse them. And so that is a biblical ethic uh, as it relates to, to the workplace. And, and so uh, I, I think that um, there are laws that have come a long way to protect workers. Uh, and we want to make sure that those protections are in place. Otherwise, uh, you know, folk would go back uh, to uh, paying people little or nothing and, and making you work triple and double overtime. And, and, you know, your kids stuck at school, you can't go pick them up because you're afraid you're going to lose your job. So, so I think those are certainly uh, gains that have been made to make life more uh, balanced uh, for the worker and for the employer. Uh, Crystal, I think you said something, you type in something that people need rights. Anybody else? I was just agreeing, I was just agreeing that, uh, everyone should have rights, meaning if, if they have a valid reason to, uh, strike, uh, for a better outcome income or whatever it is um everybody should have that right that should never be taken away okay 
That's mm -hmm. just my opinion. And good somebody, evening, everyone. Right. Good evening. Someone brought up the um, airlines. You know, like United has been without a contract for four years because mm -hmm. of this issue. So, you know, and they can't strike. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that that kind of um, becomes abusive. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's where the government needs to come in. And, and President Biden had negotiated this contract with the railroads. It was just, and some of them had accepted the deal. It was a few workers or, or unions that didn't agree with that because they wanted extra items. And so I think there has to be some level of meeting of the minds, right? So when you talk about United and them not having a contract, they should have a contract. And, and so I like some of those th areas if this person is um, non-biased, uh, uh, arbiter, is that you have these mandatory arbiters, right? Me and you are negotiating. You won't budge. I won't budge. So you have this third party who's supposed to be independent and neutral that'll say, this is what it is. And, and y'all have to accept that deal. Uh, and so I think... Um, you know, that, that's one way to make sure uh, that we have contracts that are at least somewhat fair. Uh, you know, somebody's going to be mad either way you go, because uh, if you want, if you can get 10 more dollars an hour, you're going to try to get it. <laughs> if you can save $10 an hour, you're going to try to save it. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, and so I think finding mechanisms to make sure people, again, are treated with dignity and respect and are allowed to keep the doors of their business open um, may, may require third party arbiters in, in both parties agreeing to go with whatever decisions are made. So, all right. Well, here's another question for you all because this has been on here for a while, but I never got a chance to, to, to uh, raise it. And this has to do with uh, dances at church. All right, <laughs> dances at church um, because it came to my attention about one church uh, that some uh, people didn't come to a particular event because uh, a certain person said that they're going to be dancing and they didn't understand it to mean praise dancing. The adjective of praise wasn't put in front of the dancing. So they thought that there was going to be secular dancing at the church. Uh, and on top of that, they had already known of a church where there was like secular dancing taking place in the church, maybe not the sanctuary, but in the church, uh, a church itself. And so I wanted to know, is it OK to have secular dancing at church? Is it okay for are us you, to pay you, a little Mar play a little Marvin Gray gay uh, in the multi-purpose room and and you know a little earth wind of fire and uh, you know the saints of God come out and have a wonderful time <laughs> in the Lord uh, and uh, any oh I see a couple of hands okay uh, I see Dr Hayes Latanya first so go ahead Latanya. Hello, everyone. My thought went straight to the banquet hall at our church. So if somebody rented the banquet hall for an event, I would have to say it depends on who that who's having that event, right? Now, so is the church doing this? Or is this the event people, the person that rented out this area in this event. context we're talking about church sponsored event oh. okay i don't know <laughs> i don't know you don't know if it's well if let's just say a wedding a wedding uh and a reception right it's called the reception after the wedding uh it's been 15 years so y'all got to pray for me 
uh, it's called a wedding reception. So is is would it be okay to play some Luther, some mint condition, you know, some Teddy P? If that if the person who's having this wedding, if that's what they want and they rented out the banquet hall, the church is not doing this. This is the person that's renting out this banquet hall. And they don't play be what okay they want. with that. You'd be okay saying I'm, being a church I'm Sunday saying, morning. I'm saying that if the church rented out a space and this couple was playing secular music, dance music, whatever it is, what can the church do because they rented it out? Now, if there is a stipulation in the contract to rent it out stating that, hey, whatever, then that's that. I'm saying that it can happen. If you ran out, I'm not saying the church is sponsoring it. I'm just saying that if if a church rent, rented out their spaces to the community, unless they have a stipulation, there probably will be not only secular music, secular dancing and everything. It, that's where I'm going with this. Okay. That's all I have to say. All right, Gail. Uh <clears throat> The church that I believe that was in Chicago had uh, secular music dancing inside the sanctuary. They moved back the chairs and everything and they were dancing in the sanctuary. I do not agree with that at all. I am vehemently opposed to that. However, as Tanya was saying, if they have a separate area outside of the sacred sanctuary and they're renting out space, I agree that they can uh, have secular music such as in our banquet hall or our family center. Uh, but no, definitely not in the sanctuary. Okay. So, so, so you all would be okay with a stepper set. I see you, brother Wendell. I see Crystal Hannon, and I'll come to you. So, so you all would be okay with this stepping. Uh, I can't think of something crazy to say, but the stepper set uh -huh. taking place uh -huh. in the banquet hall appetite Friday night tomorrow night. We yes. have a stepper set in the yes. banquet hall of apostolic. And it's not sponsored by Apostolic, though. Okay. Okay. So right. what's the steppers? You, you steppers, do you mean like a couple and they stepping? No, no like, you, you know, you, know, you, step left, you know what stepping is. The right, to the right, it's the same right. music that we step have, to. Yeah, they have a DJ in there, uh -huh. and they have stepping. Because you could do a praise of... Step. They got that stuff in the name of Jesus now. Come yeah, on, but I'm talking about when they doing dips and twirls and you know oh, sliding like around couple, and the like stepping couple, step, step, Chicago stepping, oh, yeah, oh, Southside Chicago, yeah, for real step, stepper set. That's, that's it. In the in the banquet hall, okay, in the multi-purpose room because we got uh, someone from the ship on here in the multi-purpose room of the ship. They in there getting it in, okay. All right, Crystal, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I, I guess I have mixed feelings. Um, going back to what, who was that, Gail said, um, when I was coming up as a teenager, I, I uh, went to a Lutheran church and the setting that she just explained, they moved the chairs back and let us have, have what's called a sock hop. And so the teenagers would dance in the sanctuary. Now, now that I look back on that, it's like, oh my God, we did that. You know, um, I feel like if that was to happen today, I, I wouldn't take part in it. Um, and it probably sounds a bit contradictory, but you put Stepha set in the, our banquet hall. I don't know that I'm 100% with that. However, I've been to two events at the church in my life, in the life of the church. And one was probably 10 years ago, or give or take a year. And it was a, it was an event that a lot of things took place. It was dinner, 
it was, I forget who sponsored it. But in the midst of that event, there was, a, we stopped and there was a line dance. And based on the um, facial expressions, I saw where a lot of people were not happy with that where they put a line dance on and, and, and you know, Saints got up in line dance. The music was clean. It was the same type of music that if I wasn't out at church, I would partake in. Uh, it was no, no gyrating, uh, nothing inappropriate. So I thought it was appropriate. It was okay. It wasn't a setting where it was just dancing, but there was a stopping of the event and then we had a dance. Our... Um, just recently, we had our first lady head. You're frozen. The guests, and they stopped the music, and we did a line dance. We, I took place, I took part in it. We did a line dance that was um, off of a cowboy western song. I thought that was okay. I still felt in my spirit there might have been a few people there that was uncomfortable with that, based on you know, some looks or whatever. Um, but I myself, I'm okay with it if it's that type of setting. Uh, and then to go, we go out on our picnics, we're outside and they play secular music and gospel music. And we do line dance and get to church. And I get to tell that to cousin man because she's safe, sanctified as I am, but her walk is a little different. Like, do you know, you still have to wear your skirts long. You still can't wear jewelry and makeup. She's still on that page. So she asked me, do you think it's okay uh, uh, for Christians to dance and listen to secular music? At a party she came to mine not too long ago. And I told her, absolutely. Um, you know, because her thing is you're not going to get in heaven <coughs> dancing and listening to secular music. And my thing is dancing is just another form of exercise. It should be clean. It should be kept clean. And your music should not be profane. But I think it's okay to dance. And I know I'm probably sounding like here and there. But and I'm, when I think of a stepper set, setting, I'm just kind of like a little bit like, uh, that's too much. Church sponsored. Okay. But if you have an event and there's some, you know, some dancing there, I think it's okay. Right. So lo location may matter. Certainly we're outlawing any vulgar music and, and stuff like that. Brother Wendell. Um, the Apostolic Church of God is very blessed to have a family center of that. The campus is so large. There should not be any secular dancing or music in any of the, of the sanctuaries. But Say, for instance, if it is a wedding reception, it, it, <clears throat> the bride and the groom usually opens the ceremony with a dance, which means they're touching one another. But if it is such as an exercise, we do movements that are safe. It's like line dancing. It's almost like dancing. There's no gyration of hips. The music that is used is inspirational. It's either gospel, but it does not have any explicit lyrics or just music itself. But it, it's in a safe environment, but there should never, ever be hand touching, hands on dancing or secular music inside the worship areas of the sanctuary. Other than that, if you if you bring it uh, stepper sets, absolutely not, because you have to touch that hand and you have to do partnership. Uh, if you notice that in lyrical dance, rarely will you see a dancer touch another dancer. So that so that keeps it safe. And, and that's what it's all about. It's like no, no touching, but no gyrations. I've had the experience where one person in my exercise class was moving like, like she was in the 50-yard line or out in the club. I had to say, sister, those movements are not allowed. You, you must follow me to exactly my movements because it's not it's disrespectful. Amen? So no, no dancing, no secular music inside the sanctuary. Okay, so it seems like right now, and I see you, Gerald, that we are, at a minimum are marking off sanctuaries. And we're saying absolutely under no situation or circumstances are we going to allow secular, we have 
say secular dancing in the sanctuary. That's correct. Um, and certainly no vulgar music in the sanctuary. Um, we can't say no secular music because to some some of your points, the bride has come down the aisle to many a songs, and not all of them have been Jesus is waiting for the bride, right? Uh, it's been all kind of Luther and, and everybody else come, coming down, uh, one look in your eyes and all, you know, y'all know the stuff. Uh, y'all ain't been saved all y'all lives. And so, uh, and so, so we have to say that it's subjective, right? Um, because the bride comes down nine times out of 10 to a secular love song and, and nobody makes a big deal out of it. Um, now, will we play that on a Sunday morning doing a worship service? Another question. And, and, and you know, and I've seen yeah. services, a pastor at a pulpit, and let's just go with the Luther singing Luther. And they're playing it at the pulpit, their clips out there. Uh, and so, but it looks like we're saying the sanctuary is sacred. Now we just have to determine is the rest of the church campus, whatever church sacred. Or are we saying, okay, uh, you can have a sock hop in the gym, but just not in the sanctuary, which I ain't heard that term, Chris, on so long. You took me back to High Park Re Academy. Uh, uh, Gerald. Uh, okay. I had kind of had issues with the banquet hall. As uh, Wendell mentioned, we have a we have a gym. <laughs> and if they were going to do something uh, dancing, possibly gym, but it could not be um, yeah, all the music would have to be PG. <laughs> Like years ago, we'd have radio versions, and well, that that went out the back door now. But if they would have to be PG, and because it's hard to monitor and uh, police people's dancing, if you're not, you know, you don't have people standing in there like armed guards at every corner. Uh, most folks don't dance properly in nowadays anyway. So it, it would kind of bother me to have people over in the gym <laughs> uh, doing some of their movements. So I'm kind of, but sanctuary, absolutely not. Not, not even uh, fellowship hall, gym. It depends on the uh, event. Okay, so now we add another layer. It depend, depends on the event because you have marriage ministries, right? And they go to the, to a hotel or conference center. I'm not going to say any of them because they're not advertising with me. So I'd be happy to thank our sponsors anytime they get ready. Uh, but we wouldn't expect them to play church music. Right. We would expect them to play at a conference center, at a hotel, at a resort, at a marriage retreat, marriage conference. And they're saying, all right, Friday night, we're going to have dinner. We're going to have dancing. I think that would probably be acceptable because it's not in the house of the Lord, as we like to say. Uh, it, it's out and about. All right. Any other thoughts? Some of y'all quiet. Y'all standing on the wall. What's up with that? Who? <laughs> oh, wow. They're coming down from the wall. <laughs> okay. No thoughts. Y'all be the ones dancing in the sanctuary? Is yeah. That seniors. Seniors ministry has had events in the banquet hall. And I believe that they've had, uh, you know, dinner and dancing and stuff like that. The seniors ministry. And then they go out to uh, have events in the hotel, as you were mentioning, as the marriage, uh, you know, the marriage ministry. So the seniors and the marriage ministry, they go out to hotels and, you know, they dance. So I feel comfortable if it's in 
any other facility other than the sanctuary. And when I say the sanctuary, I'm talking about where the word of the Lord is being teached or preached. So that for us would include the Kenwood Sanctuary and the Dorchester Sanctuary. Okay. I know you, my older sister, but I don't remember seeing you uh, <laughs> dancing in the. I was going to say, I'm like, uh oh, they done in, told on in the sanctuary. I they mean, not in the stitch. sanctuary, but at at the church. You are absolutely right, and you have not, and okay. you will not, forevermore. All right. Nope. I know that. Um, I mean, we went to last time I one I remember off campus was at Navy Pier, what uh, the cruise the ship, and that uh -huh. was hosted by our first lady. Right. It did have some line dance. Oh my God! And you talk oh, about yeah. dancing and moving it and gyrating and everything was on that ship doing that line dancing. And it was sponsored by the church. Uh, why my mama had shaking like, oh, uh, yep, mama, you were lying dancing on the ship. Yeah, you, you, her... re you recall that, right? <laughs> I mean, it was wonderful. I didn't get up there. I just enjoyed watching it. And it was sponsored by the church, but it was a facility off campus. Yeah. And I think that's the danger, right? Or that that's the liability. Let's use that word, not danger. That's the liability, because even though, forget who had it, but if there's a church-sponsored event on the spirit of Chicago or, or wherever, everybody that come ain't necessarily saved. Everybody that come, as one assistant pastor likes to say, is not necessarily delivered. Mm -hmm. But because of the forum and format, the church gets tagged with that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we own the boat, Spirit of Chicago. We paid our $50 for the celebration. And we're not at church. We plan Michael Jackson, Nita Baker, whatever. And, and the saints getting their groove, or at least the guests are getting their groove on. And then you look on Facebook, you look on Twitter and Instagram, and the Apostolic Church of God, Fellowship Baptist Church, so-and-so MBC, uh, Lutheran Episcopal Church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. had a dance party on the spirit of Chicago. That That's going to be your brand because two or three people brought their cousins with them because uh, it was an event. They can't get them to church, but hey, my church is having something on the spirit of Chicago and they come and they out there dropping this like it's hot and mm -hmm. shaking it like a salt shaker and doing all of that stuff. And they saying, so and so church, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So and so church. And so it's not an easy issue to unpack, but these are the dilemmas that we live with as we wrestle with our spirituality, uh, as we deal with our spiritual formation, is how how do we make decisions that do not reflect poorly on Christ uh, and do not reflect poorly on our churches and do not reflect poorly on ourselves. Uh, Martha, you are muted. Did you have something or are you just chilling? No, I had something. Okay. Okay. I, I feel that not in the sanctuary, but in the, uh, in the gym or in the back of the house, I think it's fine. That's my okay. thought. Because okay. you, you, you're doing it at home and different other places that you might go to. So why not? You know, don't just be a hypocrite that, oh, no, well, I'm so holy that I don't want to do, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. But you're doing it every place else. So I, I think it's okay for the, uh, the banquet hall and uh, in the gym. I think it's okay. Okay. So you also are saying the outer court y'all can do, <laughs> but right. the inner court and the holy right. of holies. Uh, you know, the holy place and the most holy place don't don't do that. But the outer court and certainly outside, you know, some of y'all say not even the outer court, but outside the entire tabernacle. But the outer court is the closest we can get. So I just think generally, though, uh, Reverend Haynes, that as a saved person, we need to be careful what we do out of out of court and in, in court. You know what I mean? 
And yes. so we just have to be careful. I, yeah, that's why my hand is so, up. Right, doctor? That's why so, my hand is up. Because the scripture says, don't let your good be evil spoken of. And I know Elder Hayes going to say it's out of context. But it's still the fact of who's watching me. It's not the fact that, no, I don't enjoy dancing in my house. But it's what is the level of someone observing me? And I think that's the question that I would have to ask myself. That's just me. Like, how would that be for them to see this? Because I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. Okay, my cousin having a birthday party and she's over here. Tanya, come on, support me. I'm your cousin. And I go and I'm just standing around because I'm like, I'm not dancing. I'll be here for you because you want. But somebody see me walking right up out of there and be like, oh my God, Dr. Hayes, the assistant pastor's wife was at so, you know, it's, it's just some of those kinds of things. So I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. You got you to gotta see. And, and this raises a couple of questions. One, Paul deals with this, right? When he deals with meat offered to idols and when he deals with drinking wine uh, and he says, first, everybody has to be fully persuaded, right? In their own mind. Now, not just saying I'm carnal persuaded, but persuaded that one, I'm not sinning against God. Even if it's not a sin, if you feel guilty doing it, then he says, don't do it. That, that that's rule number one. Number two, he says, even if you are what we would call more on the libertarian side of things and not the legalist side of the issue, if you're with someone who may be bothered by it, troubled by it, then I am to abstain on behalf of my brother and sister because I don't want to mess up my witness with them and cause them to get into something. But there's a larger issue here. And it, it's difficult for us because we, we have these walls of separation. You know, life in the Old Testament, they danced before the Lord. They had celebrations and feasts and festivals. So it, it, it's hard for us to fully appreciate how life was integrated for them. Now, granted, they went off into Canaanite worship. And, and so we could say they still did some secular stuff. But for us, the challenge is it seems like we've separated fun from being saved, right? And, and so people want to have fun, so they want to dance. And so we justify not anything being wrong with dancing, but justify using music, going places that may be suspect say it's sinful but suspect because we want to have fun and so part of the responsibility of the church of the kingdom is we have to be able to provide outlets for people to have holy fun healthy fun save fun uh, and it don't mean it got to be all jesus 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 right and in mississippi mass choir type stuff um but but there really needs to be serious work done in this area because people struggle, right? It, 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 we, we struggle. So we create what? I remember when I was single before I met the good doctor, you know, I went to one church. They used to have a club. They called it a club, you know, Christian club or something, but I would go, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't fit me. Uh, but 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 I went because you know I'm gonna kick it. It's Friday night. I'm in my 20s. I'm gonna be sitting in the house on a Friday night. But I sure don't want to go to the club, and I'm trying to stay out of trouble. So let me go to the Christian club. Uh, and so um, so, but it's because there was nothing for me, right? You no, know, stay home, read the Bible, pray. Yeah, right. You know, uh, you know, you know, yeah, right is is the thing. Uh, so go ahead, Crystal. I'm going to let you have the last word and then I'm going to close this out in prayer. Real real quick, I want to say uh, personally, dancing is a hobby for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it started out as a hobby for me. Now it's, I do it as a living, but um, uh, skating, dancing, those are hobbies for me. So when I leave here, I will be dancing. Okay, I will dance my way to heaven. And I just want to pose a question. When do we stop? 
worrying about what the world sees sees us doing because I, my dancing is clean it's fun it's it's therapy to me so if someone sees me out dancing at a picnic oh well a crystal heart is still with the lord i'm still saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost and god knows that because he created me so i cannot worry about how the world views me and like uh reverend knuckles said somebody called bishop one day because they saw her going in the room with the choir director okay i know you all heard that story well, what's she doing going in the room with the choir director? Because somebody has always got their eyes on us waiting to say, oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. That's just gonna not, it's not going to go away. But I just refuse to live like that. Terrorized by what people think about me when I'm just having fun, clean fun. And I had to tell that to my cousin. Yes, yeah, she said, what does your pastor think about dancing and listening to secular music? I said, I think he's quite okay with it because he allows it at the picnics. So he must be okay with it. So I, I ended with that. I'm ran and raised, but I love to dance. So. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I can't speak for, for any pastors. Um, and, you know, I, I go, well, I haven't been in a long time because they closed my roller rink, but I went roller skating and stuff like that. I, I just think we really need to have conversations around this because there are, there are people who may be engaging in, in behavior that is probably not wise. And then there's probably people abstaining from engaging in behavior they could participate in, right? So you got the extreme, you got the legalist again, and then you got the libertarian. Uh, neither are right on the extremes. So, uh, you know, I think uh, there's, there's more conversation and more work. Now I'm talking about scholarship now, the nerdy me, more scholarship needs to be done on this because people have questions. What can I do? What can I do? Uh, and, you know, Paul, this says, use your spiritual judgment, right? And, and so that's where we have to rest at is use our spiritual judgment. We do have the Holy Spirit. If we pray about it and and, and the Holy Spirit says it's okay, then it's okay. If we pray about it and the Holy Spirit says it's probably not wise to do that, then, you know, it's the lawful expedient thing, um, but it's also the, the, the spirit of the Lord, there, there's liberty. So there's a difficult, delicate balance we can't solve today uh, because it takes a lot of work, a lot of more input and people to flush this out. But I just wanted to mess with you all on that because uh, I thought that was interesting about having church dances in the sanctuaries or dances in the church sanctuary. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you today. We honor and bless you that we do have freedom in you. And we thank you that we do have the Holy Spirit who you said will lead and guide us into all truth. And so, Lord, we pray all of us, no matter who we are, how long we've been saved, what title, position. We have, Lord, we want to be in alignment with your will, and we want to enjoy this creation and life that you gave us. So we pray that you would give us a better understanding of how to have healthy, holy fun, how to enjoy life, to enjoy you, uh, Lord, without crossing boundaries and barriers. And so, Lord, we pray that you will order our steps, that you would touch all who are sick in their body, that you would provide uh, financial support to those who are in need, that you will comfort those who are brokenhearted. We pray that you would open up doors for those who have been confined and restricted. And we just pray that you continue to bless our country, bless our neighborhood, bless our communities, bless our world, uh, bless our workers and our businesses, Lord. And we just pray uh, that you continue to bless the Cafe Manor community. We give your name the honor, glory, and praise. Now let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you all on next Thursday.